hello and welcome to the little coffee roastery here in Macclesfield, Cheshire. We're going to be creating a series of videos for you to explain different brew methods which you can do from home. In this video, we're going to be focusing on making a smooth and delicious espresso. Of course, there are so many different methods for making espresso, but this video is going to be focusing on espresso with a home roaster machine. So for this, let's leave the roastery and head home. So I've returned to my home coffee machine. And just before we start making our espresso, let's quickly touch on what an espresso actually is. So in simple terms, an espresso is a small concentrated coffee drink, which is made by forcing water through finely ground coffee at a high pressure. When it comes to an espresso, one of the most important factors is what beans you're using. We would always recommend buying coffee which has a roasted on date, as this way you know exactly how long since your beans were roasted. Like many other food products, fresher is better. If you only have a best before date on your coffee, you have no idea how long that coffee has been sat on a shelf for. Therefore, sometimes that coffee can be very bitter tasting and have lost a lot of its original flavours. If you are interested in knowing more about coffee labelling and what to look out for, make sure to check out our blog post on our website, thelittlecoffeeroastery.co.uk. To start making my espresso, I'm going to weigh out 18 grams of coffee beans and I'm going to aim to get out 27 to 30 grams of espresso in about 27 seconds. Whilst this recipe might not give you the perfect taste with every bean, I find it's a really good place to start and gives me a good indication if I want my coffee to run faster or slower. It's good to get into the habit of making sure to always dry your portafilter and to dry your tamp as well. This is because if it's wet, coffee will get stuck to certain patches and it will stop your coffee flowing smoothly. So now we have our freshly ground beans. So as I don't have a distribution tool at home, I use the side of my hand to just try and level out the coffee before tamping. Now with this tamp, you want it to be nice and even so that the water will flow through that bed of coffee at a nice even rate. Make sure to lock that portafilter in place so that it won't easily come undone. I would always suggest using a scale when you're making coffee as this allows you to either recreate a delicious drink you've made before or if one isn't just how you want it, you also understand the variables you need to change. Now, in this case, you can see my coffee is running really fast, almost like water. So what I need to do is adjust my grind size and make it finer. After making any grinder adjustments, you're gonna want to put through some beans, grind them, and unfortunately, throw them. This is because what you currently have in your grinder is a mix of the old and the new size. So if you go through the whole process again of making your coffee, you're not going to have an accurate idea of what your grinder is now set to. So here I am, just throwing some beans, and now I'm putting in my new load of 18 grams at a finer grind size. When you tamp your coffee, it's very important to keep it even and level. This is to allow the water to have an even extraction throughout the entire coffee. So here is an example of a tamp which would give you channeling. See how one side of the coffee is higher than the other? This means that water will flow faster through one half than the other, which is going to leave you with a very bitter drink. Now we have one side of the coffee flowing nicely, well, you'll see the other side of the coffee is wobbling and spluttering, and that is exactly channeling. We've talked about if your coffee's running too fast, but briefly, if your coffee is running too slow 
or even just dripping, what you need to do is make your ground size coarser. Now, in this video, I managed to get my espresso to a place I was happy with. It's worth remembering, you often need to adjust your grinder more than once until you get to a place where you're really happy with your espresso. Welcome back to The Little Coffee Roastery. We hope you found our first video informative and full of useful information. If you have any remarks or comments, please pop them below or send us a message. And of course, it would be amazing if you could subscribe to our channel so you're the first to see any new videos that we post. Thank you and enjoy your espresso.